Hello and welcome to our creation-focused worship service. I am Phoebe Morad, Executive Director of Lutherans Restoring Creation. And our Lutherans Restoring Creation Board of Directors has graciously put this together and we thank all those who have put their time and talents into making this a reality. We hope you enjoy it. And I just wanted to let you know that right now I am uh, welcoming you standing on the land that originally was kept by the Patuxet people. And I encourage you all to consider the people that originally cared for the land that you now find yourself standing on. Come worship the God of creation. We gather to praise the creator, the continuous source of all living things. Come worship our God who breathes life into being. We praise the creator who fashions the forest, who trees clean the air of the world. Come worship our God who forms life out of soil. We praise the creator whose land brings nourishment. Come worship our God who receives our lament in the wilderness. We praise the creator whose son brings healing to all creation. Come, worship our God who sends waters flowing with life. We praise the creator whose baptism unites us to be one in the body of creation. Hello, this is Marty Haugen. Sing Out Earth and Skies was written in the summer of 1984 when our family was at Holden Village. The Holden community was planning a worship service that might move out from our indoor worship space in the village center and end up in the midst of the beautiful wilderness surrounding Holden. Because it was a portable song, it was written very simply. We accompanied it with only a guitar, a recorder, and a hand drum. Like so much of the art, created at Holden, it both reflected the values and the vision of the community. It was never intended to have a life beyond the community at that moment. I am so grateful that I am able at this point to contribute to Lutheran's Restoring Creation, and I hope that your vision of Restoring Creation might not only be a season, but at the very heart of what we celebrate whenever we gather. So righteous one, come and bring our love to birth in the glory of your Son. Sing out earth and sky, sing of the God who loves you. Raise your joyful cries, dance to the light around you. Come, O oh God of wind and flame, fill the earth with righteousness. Teach us all to sing your name, may our lives your love confess. Sing out earth and sky, sing of the God who loves you. Raise your joyful cries, dance to the life around you. Come, O oh God of flashing light, twinkling star and burning sun. God of day and God of night, in your light we all are one. Sing out earth and sky, sing of the God who loves you. Raise your joyful cries, dance to the light around you. Come, O oh God of snow and rain, shower down upon the earth. Come, O oh God of joy and pain, God of sorrow, God of mirth. Sing out earth and sky, sing of the God who loves you. Raise your joyful cries, dance to the earth around you. Come, O oh justice, come, O oh peace, come and shape our hearts anew. Come and make oppression cease, bring us all to life in you. Sing out earth and sky, sing of the God who loves you. Raise your joyful cries, dance to the light around you. Sing out earth and sky, sing of the God who loves you. Raise 
your joyful cries dance to the light around you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who so loves the world and all who live in it. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God, creation, and one another. Reconciling God, we expect nature to serve our needs and we have damaged it in the process. We trample every wild place and pollute your waters. We abuse your good earth until it cries out in pain. Forgive us, loving God. Remind us of the covenant you made with the whole earth. Nourish us so we can restore your awe-inspiring creation. Amen. Siblings in Christ, the one who was buried into the heart of the earth, and then raised up to new life, forgives you all of your sin, freed from your burdens, be led by the Spirit to do God's healing work in the world. Amen. Let us pray. Creator of life, of relationships, of healing, 
At your word, the earth brought forth plants, yielding seed, and trees of every kind bearing fruit. Through the planetary cycles of renewal and growth, you open your hand and give creatures our food. But these days, our living pushes the planet beyond its limits. During this season of creation, we ask you to grant us courage to observe a Sabbath for our planet. Teach us to be satisfied with enough. And as we proclaim a jubilee for the earth, send your Holy Spirit to renew the face of creation. In the name of the one who came to proclaim good news to all creation, Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from Jonah. God saw their efforts to renounce their evil behavior, and God relented by not inflicting on them the disaster that threatened them. But Jonah grew indignant and fell into rage. He prayed to Yahweh and said, Please, Yahweh, isn't this exactly what I said would happen when I was still in my own country? That is why I left and fled to Tarshish. I knew you were a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness, relenting from violence. Now, Yahweh, please take my life. I'd rather be dead than keep on living. Then Yahweh said, what gives you the right to be angry? Jonah then left the city and sat down to the east of it. There he made a shelter for himself and sat down under the shade to see what would happen to the city. Then Yahweh said, sent a castor plant to grow up over Jonah to shade his head and soothe his indignation. Jonah was delighted with the castor oil plant, but at dawn the next day, God sent a worm to attack the castor oil plant and it withered. And after the sun had risen, God sent a scorching east wind. The sun beat down on Jonah's head and so that he was overcome and begging for death and said, I'd rather be dead than keep on living. God said to Jonah, what gave you the right to be upset about the castor plant? He replied, I have every right to be angry to the point of death. God replied, you feel sorrow because of a castor plant that cost you no labor, that you did not make grow, that sprouted in a night and that perished in a night. Is it not right then for me to feel sorrow for the great city of Nineveh in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left to say nothing of the animals. Word of God, word of life. I will extol you, my God and King. And bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. God's greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall allow your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works. I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness.
they shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness. and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger. And abounding in steadfast love. A reading from Philippians. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come to see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit. I mean, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel are and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them is the evidence of their destruction but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege, not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you're having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now here, that I still have. So ends the reading. Hi there. My name is John Stevens, and I'm pastor of Zion Lutheran Church in Oregon City, Oregon. And I want to talk to you about the gospel lesson today. This uh, Jesus tells a story about some workers that they go out to uh, out to a farm and they get hired. And um, I brought along with me uh, some things that will help me. There are three different pieces of rope. And. We've got a long piece of rope, and this is uh, talking about the guy that got hired at the very beginning of the day, and he worked all day long. And there's a medium-sized rope, and this is about the other guy, uh, the other person that got hired to work about half of the day. And then there's the last person that got hired to work just a little bit, just the very end of the day. So we've got that. Uh, short rope for the short time of working. We got the medium size rope for the medium uh, half day working. And then we've got the long rope for the person that worked all day long. Uh, you know, this actually reminds me a little bit about um, about you and I, you know, we've got, um, there's people, may, maybe, um, maybe you're uh, young, really, really young. And you're like, oh, I don't know uh, what I can do um, to take care of the earth because today we're looking and celebrating the earth and creation and all of that around us. It's like, I don't know what I can do because I'm, I'm pretty little, or maybe, um, you're a little bit older than that. And you're like, well, you know, I know, I know some stuff. I I might be able to do some stuff. And then, then there's the, the people that have been doing it for a long time. And they're like, Oh, I can do it all by myself. Well, like the person that worked for just a little bit, we have, the, we have the person that worked for just a little bit. And then we have the person that worked for just the medium size of the half of the day. And then we have the person that worked all day long or the person that's a little small or doesn't know a lot about taking care of the earth and goes, I don't know what I can do. Or the person that's been doing it for a while. It's like, oh, I, or the person that says, I can do it so well, I don't need anybody else. Well, we hear at the end of the, 
end of that story that everyone gets paid the same because that's the way God's grace and mercy works is that we're loved the same. It's all based on the God that loves us. It's not based on what I do. It's based on what God decides to do and God decides to love you and me and you and you and you and you and you. And, you. and then you and I, we're then called to take care of this world. We're called to take care of the earth. And whether you're little or you have maybe a little taller or you've been around for a while or maybe you're older or or you're you've got a lot of time that you've done stuff or you got a little bit of time you've done stuff. You know, the thing is, is we need each other. And like how we have these ropes that are different length. Well, God calls us all into this world the same and that asks us that all of it, God looks at us through the same eyes, loves us the same amount, and then we work together, you and I, you and I work together to make this world a better place. All of us together and together we can we can do that and we can show God that we love this earth that we love the God that created it and we can say thank you to God for loving us first I am so glad you stopped by. I'm so glad you're here with us. We're outside and having a great day enjoying God's creation. All right, we will see you later. Thank you, bye-bye. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he came out again about noon, and about three o'clock he did the same, and about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last, and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I gave to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Are you envious because I am generous? So, the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, a grace to you and peace from God and from our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So I'm preaching about the prophet Jonah and about the good news for us in this moment of environmental crisis. The first question is, who are we in the story of Jonah? As a seminary professor and preacher, I've typically seen myself in the role of Jonah, the reluctant prophet called to preach to Nineveh, the evil city. And I've seen myself as needing to be taught a lesson by that plant that God sends to teach Jonah that God's grace is bigger than he imagines. But what if instead of seeing ourselves in the role of Jonah, the prophet called to preach repentance to the great city that needs to turn, what if we see ourselves as that great city, that great city that needs to turn and repent? 
What if we see ourselves as Nineveh? Just to review, Nineveh was the capital city of the Assyrian Empire. You can read all about its sins in the prophet Nahum. Ah, city of bloodshed, utterly deceitful, full of plunder, who enslaves nations and peoples. Your merchants multiplied by, like the stars of the earth. So Nineveh is bad, full of brutal violence, economic injustice, slave labor, greed. And now Nineveh, this toxic killing system, has come to God's attention. Nineveh is coming under judgment. But God doesn't want Nineveh to be destroyed. God wants to save Nineveh. God wants Nineveh to turn and repent. There is so much good news in the book of Jonah for our times that can help us today in our time of multiple crises. The fact is that we too live at a time when God wants the greatest powers on earth to turn. We see imperial systems exposed, laid bare today by multiple crises. God wants us to turn, to change course. That's the biblical word shuv, the Hebrew, or in Greek, it's metanoia, to turn around so that we and our beloved world will not be destroyed. We face multiple crises today that are killing people. You know them. Interconnected systems of violence, structures of violence that are destroying lives unequally, especially black and brown people's lives. The coronavirus pandemic. The sin of white supremacy and racial injustice and violence. The sin of economic injustice, economic in inequality causing suffering and at the same time, the sin of environmental injustice, the slow moving, looming climate crisis manifested in droughts, hurricanes and floods in Puerto Rico, in Iowa, in India, heat waves and wildfires in California, last year in Australia, terrible fires. This is the crisis that carries the most perilous long-term consequences for hundreds of millions of refugees around the world people fleeing crop loss in their homelands, crossing borders to find food because their land can no longer support farms anymore. Like the people in the Bible, Naomi and Ruth, Jesus crossing borders for safety from violence. This is the global climate change crisis, overheating our planet, the result of burning of fossil fuels. The world is ill, we are ill. We need turning, like that song, the canticle of the turning. The world is about to turn, and we pray that it will turn in time to be saved. I've met Central American farmers who are no longer able to raise their crops because the rains don't come when they should anymore. I've met Tanzanian Lutherans from mountain villages who had never had malaria mosquitoes before global warming, and now they're losing children to malaria death. I've met Lutheran families from Alaskan villages, Shishmarif, whose houses are falling into the ocean because of melting permafrost and loss of sea ice. And this is the great injustice of climate change, that the people and communities who have done nothing to cause the problems are the ones who are being hardest hit with greatest suffering. That's not fair. Jonah finally got the message. He was turned back in the correct direction Jonah reluctantly then went to Nineveh, preaching, in just 40 days, this great city will be destroyed. But prophecy doesn't mean prediction. That's the mistake Jonah made. Prophecy means warning. It makes, means wake-up call. There's still time to repent and turn. In just 40 days, he said. In just 10 years, our best scientists are saying. That's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And I believe the scientists. I believe their wake-up call. I hope you believe them too. So we face a kairos moment. That's the biblical word the Greek Orthodox Patriarch Archbishop Bartholomew uses to describe our moment in time. So he founded the season of creation. That's what we're observing now, the season of creation, joined by all our churches, the Lutheran World Federation, the World Council of Churches, Roman Catholic Churches, Pope Francis, Lutherans Restoring Creation, your congregation, all of us, 
Kairos is a biblical word that means an urgent moment in time that is now. Time to turn is now. If we want to hope to keep global temperature rise under a 3.6 degree increase, a safe level, to avert disastrous consequences, to protect the oceans, to protect these beautiful forests that are the lungs of our planet. The time is now to clean up the air and water so our children and grandchildren inherit a livable planet. We must follow the path that our best policy leaders say is possible. We must turn away from burning fossil fuels, electrify everything, make a just transition to clean, renewable energy, protect the most vulnerable people and communities, provide for those who lose their livelihoods as a result. We've got to flatten the, car the curve of carbon emissions. It's urgent and we can do it. The book of Jonah has so much good news for us in this moment of crisis. That's why I'm preaching on Jonah. Three things. The first good news, God loves Nineveh, this hated foreign city. God loves it. God's heart is moved to compassion by the more than 120,000 people who live there, plus the many animals. This is good news for us. God does not want Nineveh to be destroyed. God wants people there to listen, to change, to avert the catastrophe. God is gracious. God loves Nineveh and us and the whole creation passionately. Second good news, and perhaps the most amazing, change happens. Much to Jonah's amazement, even his chagrin, the city of Nineveh does repent. They turn a great turning. They turn around. They put on sackcloth and ashes. They repent. Even the animals put on sackcloth and ashes. And I don't know if you've ever tried to put clothes on animals, but that's pretty funny. The model of Nineveh as a huge imperial city turning away from its path of violence and injustice, its unsustainable path to a different path in just 40 days, this can serve as an inspiration for us as a model of how our economies can shift. And if the coronavirus pandemic has taught us anything good, it's that we have the ability to make drastic changes really fast. That's hopeful. We can do it. Nineveh, the giant ship of state, all the people, all the animals, everything, they changed their course. They turned around. They changed policy really fast. That's what repentance means. How did they do it? How did change happen? Well, it was a people's movement. It's like what Congressman John Lewis called good trouble. The change began with people who listened to God. They took to the streets organizing good trouble to pressure their leaders to change. In response then to grassroots pressure, the king listened. He repented. He got on board. He embarked on a fast track campaign to change the empire away from injustice. All shall turn away from their evil way and from violence, he said. Perhaps we are in time to avert the disaster. He made the case so we won't be destroyed. They even enlist the animals to join the turning. And so can we. Everybody participates. The third piece of good news here is that disaster was averted. This is what makes Jonah mad in that hilarious pouting scene with the bush. I knew you were a God slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. What an amazing confession of faith. I knew you were a God of steadfast love. Time is short. It was only 40 days for Nineveh. It's 10 years or so for us. But the good news we can learn for Jonah is that there is still time to avert disaster. Now, to be sure, global warming coronavirus, these are not punishments from God, and we need to say that. That's a big difference from us and the Jonah story. God doesn't send sicknesses or catastrophes as punishment. That would be terrible theology. But global warming does follow a logic of consequences, laws of physics and chemistry. We live on this beautiful, finely calibrated planet with the perfect amount of carbon in the atmosphere. Most of our carbon isn't in the atmosphere. In fact, it's safely sequestered underground, under our feet, in rock layers. And I used to be a geology major, so I love this geology. Most of the carbon is underground. 
And in this wonderfully calibrated system, certain actions cause other actions. So you can't keep digging up the fossil carbon that's sequestered underground and burning it and releasing it into the atmosphere without causing terrible consequences, without burning up the planet. For now, oceans are absorbing most of the carbon, but that too has consequences and we have to stop. The good news is God has built this amazing planet with powers for healing and resilience. Scientists tell us there's still time to change, that nature can help us heal. We can draw down carbon. This is one of my favorite books, The Drawdown Project, 100 Ways to Draw Down Carbon Below These Levels. We're at now a 440 parts per million and increasing. All of us can be part of the turning. All of us can be part of the drawdown, supporting a transition to renewable energy, regenerative agriculture, battery storage technology, advocating for putting a real price on carbon that reflects its externalities, its true cost. We can pay farmers to sequester carbon in the soil and forests as carbon stores. We can build resilient communities, green teams in our congregations and synods. We can share a vision of turning what abundant life for all creation looks like, Jesus' vision for abundant life. That's what we're working on with Lutherans Restoring Creation, with the, our Congregational Green Team Program, the Green Shepherds Program. That's what we're working on with the ELCA Sustainability Table, with advocacy, how to love God's world, how to trouble the waters with good trouble for justice, for God's people, and for all creation. The prophet Jonah can serve as a parable for us, for our church, for all of us. Nineveh, that huge world trading empire that God did not give up on, can be an inspiration for us today, for system change, for urgent repentance, for turning our economy away from injustice and violence. This is a Kairos moment for us in these next crucial years, and we can do it. So there's unbelievable good news for Nineveh in this story, good news that we can all take to heart. Surely we can do as well as Nineveh. We can do better. The prophet Jonah is still speaking today. God still loves us so much that God pleads with us to turn. It's not too late. God is a God of generosity, full of compassion. God is still teaching us lessons through the plants, the bushes, the animals, the ecosystems, through nature that can heal us. Turn us, O oh God of great compassion. Turn us, turn us to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeff Slicer, coming to you from Franklin Creek State Natural Area, one of the gems in the Illinois State Park system. Along with the good folks of the heart of Illinois, Lutheran Paris, which includes First Lutheran Church in Lee, Illinois, and Emmanuel Lutheran Church uh, outside of Compton, Illinois, I'd like to say peace be with From my little garden here in Jacksonville, Jacksonville Campus Ministry shares the peace of Christ with you now and always. Hi, this is Pat Allman Road in beautiful Breezy Point, Queens, New York. And on behalf of my brothers and sisters at St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Midtown Manhattan, peace be with you. Hi, I'm Ruth Ivory Moore, Program Director for Environment and Corporate Social Responsibility for the ELCA's Advocacy Office. I bring you greetings from Ashburn, Virginia and from my flower garden. Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. I am Larry Erickson, and this is First Lutheran Church in Manhattan, Kansas. From our backyard solar panels in eastern Washington, where I'm teaching remotely with the Lutheran School of Theology at Chicago, the peace of the Lord be with you. Hi, I'm Heidi Michelson, director of the Praxis Center in Costa Rica, which provides study abroad and service learning programs for Valparaiso University and Augustana College. La paz del Señor sea siempre con ustedes. Hi, this is Russ Senti, coming to you from the Gulf Coast, along with my brothers and sisters in Christ from Atascacita Lutheran, Humble, Texas. Peace be with y'all. 
On behalf of House of Prayer Lutheran Church in Hingham, Massachusetts, the Morad family shares the peace, peace of the Lord. Lord. Peace be with you from Martin Luther Lutheran Church outside of Kansas City, Missouri. And now wherever you should find yourself, uh, if you are with somebody, I invite you to share the peace with them. During the offertory time, God invites us to reflect God's own generosity in our own gifts. So we invite you to give to your own congregations, and we also invite you to consider giving a gift to Lutherans Restoring Creation. And you can do that by going to the Lutherans Restoring Creation website at lutheransrestoringcreation.org. And then you can click on this blue button right here, Donate and you're able to make a secure donation online. And you can use a credit card or PayPal, and you can add any of the options that you want. You can select a frequency for your gift if you'd like to give monthly or yearly or even twice a month. You can also add in a honoring uh, if you'd like to write a person that, or a place that reminds you to care for God's creation. And then you can also decide if you'd like to be recognized on our website. We are so grateful for any gifts that you are able to give during this time. We would not be able to do this work without your incredible generosity. Let us pray. Loving creator, all creation comes from you. Forests, lands, and prairies, wild places, rivers, and streams. As we bring our offerings to you, we ask that you bless them so that your kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This affirmation of faith is by Bruce Pruer. We believe in the debonair God who clothes the wild flowers, dressing them so superbly that they outdo Solomon in all his glory, who is the true friend of all creatures great and small, who feeds magpies and laughing kookaburras and even doleful ravens and drongos. We believe in the God of Christ Jesus, the source of abundance, full of grace and truth. We believe in the extravagant God who turns the other cheek, goes the second mile, turns water into the best wine, brings healing with every touch, and who welcomes a woman's offering of love as she fills the house with unforgettable fragrance. We believe in the faithful God of Jesus Christ, who sweated blood in an olive grove and kept the faith to the very end. We believe in the redeeming God, who spared no cost, forgave even his brutal crucifiers, had time for a dying thief at his side, and who on the third day did a thing so prodigious that even his friends were over, were dismayed with joy. We believe in the God of Jesus Christ, the source of abundance wherever we turn and no matter what we do. Amen. O oh God, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, your great love has placed us in your good creation, and you commanded us to care for it. Your works declare glory and strength, and you call us to praise and reverence where we have degraded or destroyed Earth's bounty. Forgive us. Where we have taken beauty and majesty for granted, have mercy upon us where we have become estranged from the creatures with whom we share this planet. Grant us peace. Creator God, hear our prayer. 
As we reflect upon our relationship with your creation, we know that there are many things that thwart our efforts to care for all that you have made. For the openness to learn about environmental issues and concerns and the courage to advocate for and protect all that has been entrusted to us, we pray. Creator God, hear our prayer. In such a great and complex world, we often feel so small and helpless, as if what we do has no impact on the rest of your creation. Yet we know that because we are created in your image, we are connected with the entirety of creation just as you are. For an awareness of how our own lifestyles can be modified to help protect the environment, we pray. Creator God, hear our prayer. In an environmental catastrophe, the people who suffer first and greatest are often the poorest of the poor. Yet we rarely hear their voices silenced as they are by the realities of global life. For those who live in poverty and suffer the devastating effects of flooding, drought, and other environmental issues, we pray. Creator God, hear our prayer. In recent days, even the ground under our feet has begun to tremble, reminding us that we live in a fragile community of life. For our own community, our city and state, and for those who suffer from sickness and death, we pray. Creator God, hear our prayer. God of the sun and the moon, of the mountains and the deserts and the plains, God of the mighty oceans, of rivers and lakes and streams, God of all the creatures that live in the seas and fly in the air, of every living thing that grows and moves on this sacred earth. Help us to love and respect all that you have made. Help us to care for what you have made good and holy. Give us the wisdom and the passion to change our minds and our hearts and our ways. Let us be the change we pray for, bringing about ecological conversion, which grows and spreads to every corner of the earth for our sake now and for every generation which is to come. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. 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 I'm Guy Irwin, president of United Lutheran Seminary and former bishop of the Southwest California Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Receive the blessing. God of creation, who made the heavens and the earth to reflect your glory and your love, bless us. Give us eyes to see your wonders and your love in the beauty and power of nature. Strengthen us to care for the world that you have made, to protect the air and water, to take our food from the land without destroying it, to find joy and peace in all that you have made. Give us courage to go forth in ways that are strong and good. And the blessing of Almighty God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be with you now and always. Amen. Even the sparrows, even the sparrows find a home at your altar. Even the sparrows find a home. Even the sparrows, even the sparrows find a home. 
at your altar even the sparrows find a home blessed are they whose strength is you whose hearts are the highways of zion as they go through a dry dry land they may get a place of springs they go from strength to strength the God of gods will be seen in Zion. Even the sparrows, even the sparrows find a home at your altar. Even the sparrows find a home. Better to be one who waits outside the house of the Lord my God then live in tents of wickedness better to wait outside even the sparrows even the sparrows find a home at your altar even the sparrows find a home.